Hello and welcome to the Legacy Changemaker broadcast. As usual, we are here to feature and celebrate changemakers of all sizes who are working towards a more peaceful, prosperous, hopeful, and people and planet centered world. You might wonder, how do we invite and find those people? Actually, we don't. We ask previous speakers to tell us who has been inspiring them. And if you have been with us last week, you will know that last week we featured Tiago Roberti Sampio. And he said that one of his big inspirations has been Tessie, Anthony Dunasau. So I approached her and I asked her if she will be willing to join the Legacy Changemaker broadcast. And yes, she said yes. But let me tell you what Tiago says about Tessie. I met her at the first TEDx event I attended. She was a speaker there. She had an amazing story and was very open and keen to talking to me. And even later, she helped me promote the analysis mode game. And because of all that, I myself became a TEDx speaker as well. I will be speaking, that's Tiago, at the TEDx Ulu, Finland in April. She helped me realize it was my time to give back to the world and inspire others. Thank you, Tiago. Thank you so much for introducing to us Tessie. Tessie, can I welcome you? Hello, Viliana. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, everyone. So how are you today? I'm really good. It's Friday. Yes. Um, and Bef mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I'm just I'm in the city. I uh, just had some meetings. As you can hear, baby is next to me with my husband. So my husband is taking care of him while we are speaking together. And he contributes a little bit to the show as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, it's all fantastic. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, let me quickly uh, kind of introduce you to our audience. So Tessie is a fintech investor, consultant, professional speaker, advisor, and innovator. She has spent five years in the Luxembourgish army. Uh, and for her military and global work, Tessie has received numerous awards, some of which are the freedom of the city of London for her humanitarian work the leader of the year 2019 for the Luxembourg Leadership Academy, the woman of the DK Award for the, from the Women Economic Forum, and an honorary doctorate from the Paris School of Arts for her work in education and others. In addition to all this, Tessie is the co-founder of Professors Without Borders, the co-founder of the fashion label Human Highness Couture, and the UNA's global advocate for young women and adolescent girls. In May this year, she became the global patron of the Kindness Matters campaign, launched by the UNESCO Mahatma Gandhi University of Education for Peace and Sustainable Development. In addition to all this, she's a proud mom of three boys, and we have the youngest star, youngest star, youngest one with us today. And not to forget, she's working towards a PhD in integrative medicine. So what a woman we have today. And please, beautiful people, do ask your questions. Pose your questions in the chat, and we will make sure that Tessie will answer them. So Tessie, let's dive straight in. Perfect. Let me start by asking you, what is the change that you, Tessie, wants to bring into the world? Of course, as a human being and as a mother, you have that nurturing instinct. Um, and since I have been, since I can think, I always wanted to help where I can and be there for the fellow people around me, my family, my friends, and society as a whole. So um, I'm a serial entrepreneur which means that I have different companies and I have different charities and I'm part of different charities. Uh, I just can't get enough of input um, that stimulates me. I really love it. And so the change I want to bring into the world 
is um, a good example for that is Professor Sudabodas, my charity. Mm -hmm. um, we're all very privileged, uh, certainly the ones on, on our call today. And um, as such, we have a responsibility to give back as well in any way we can you know it doesn't need to be money it can also be skill it can be time it can be all kinds of different things and so for me it was really important to give back as well um, the education i have received for other young people around the world that cannot access it and so uh, we launched professor sudat borders almost six years ago two friends of mine and myself um, while we were also teaching at university in london I was teaching on biological terrorism at uh, Regents. And um, with that, I really think I'm giving something to the world that uh, is needed. And um, the reward has been incredible so far. The young people we have been working with, some of them have entered law school now. Um, some of them have entered institutions in the different countries. When I talk about countries, I'm talking about Sierra Leone, Uganda, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam. Nigeria, um, India. So we are quite spread and um, it's just incredible the change we have seen. Um, another example as well, a tangible one really, um, was in, um, it, it was in Sierra Leone where they had the big landslide when there was so much rain two years ago. And uh, we were teaching on disaster relief that summer. And when that happened, our teachers have left just a few days before that. And thanks to the education we gave to the students, they could put that in practice straight away and really be a help to the institutions and the government when this happened. And that is what we want, that we teach something that they can use straight away on the ground, reverse the brain drain, give them what they need in their countries in order to be a, a, a tool for change in their countries, rather than dreaming of leaving and coming to European countries, it's important to give back where they are and, and really help the society where they are. So that is where I think um, one, definitely one great ambition of change in me is being um, put out there through Professor Stavrodas. When I asked you, what would you like to talk about? You gave me this title. What is this all about? Are you really going to tell us about the obstacles in your life? Well, you know, obstacles are part of life. Mm -hmm. um, we have obstacles at home. We have obstacles at work. We have obstacles just being with people, right? So I think obstacles make us who we are. We just need to change the way we look at them. Um, something I always tell my mentees, I mentee, uh, I'm a mentor to quite a few hundred young girls around the world. And also when I teach at university or with press supporters, something I always say to them is that you have a choice. You're sitting on a train, imagine a train, close your eyes. There's one side where you see the valley and the water and the birds and just the, flo the floor and fauna, beautiful. On the other side, you see a wall, which is also beautiful, you know, but right, you have a choice. The train is empty. Which side do you sit on? That's the same as looking at an obstacle. An obstacle can make you depressed, angry, bitter, frustrated, and all kinds of things. But also an obstacle can be seen as, as a lesson, maybe a hard lesson. You know, I had also hard lessons in my life, and I go into more examples of that in a minute. Um, as a lesson, as, as, uh, as something you need to look at maybe differently, right? And so the lessons I had in life, I did that choice. Am I bitter, frustrated, angry, or do I look at it? Okay, this has happened now. This has happened to me, or this is being exposed uh, in front of me or whatever it is. How do I react? And out of that, there is always opportunities if you look at it in the positive way, because you're learning from it and then you can make something better or grow something different or create a new business even. Um, an example from that was um, when at the end of my divorce, I was still working at a big media company and I really loved working for them. But I was faced with the obstacle of being a single mom then of two almost teenage sons, um, not having much revenue or any support really, um, other than what I could provide for them. And it was just, I needed that time for them, you know, because divorce is, is, is something difficult for everyone, right? And um, no matter who you are. And 
imagine for the children, right? Because they don't always understand what's going on. And so when they needed me more than before, obviously. And I wanted to be there for them and be that rock just until they are stable again, because it rocks you. It rocks us adults. So imagine, right, for the little kids. And so I said, I need to become an entrepreneur. I need to create my own business because working for someone is great. And yes, it gives me the stability of the revenue, which I needed as well. But time-wise, you need to be in the office at eight or nine in the morning and you work all day, right? And children, they have school some days until 12, some days until four. But what happens after they are done, right? If you are not there and I couldn't afford a nanny or anyone to help me with. And so um, that was that, that obstacle I had then with making a decision, I want this for my children, but I need to provide this. And what could be the solution, which created the opportunity then for me to be open to the, to the thought, okay, I create my own business, which is scary in itself. It's an obstacle too, right? But there again, there comes all of these opportunities. So it's really like a, like a circle. When you go from obstacle to opportunity, it just, it runs, right? And that, that was one of the examples how I have overcome an obstacle and created an opportunity. I love how you said we have a choice and we can choose either to be bitter or to dive into and see what we can find on the other side. I think this is an, an, amazing, an amazing choice. We need to constantly be aware of and practice it. Um, thank you for the examples and thank you for being so personal. It, it's really inspiring to talk to you and to learn from you. What kind of businesses have you created? So businesses, um, I'm just a person who is so curious about the world. I really, ah, there's some things I, I always dreamed about. So for example, mo a lot of girls I know always wanted to have their own clothes line. And I always thought, ah, oh, how, how can I do that? And how is it possible? And what do I need to put in place? And, uh, and all these things. And all of a sudden it found me. I met Millie at a luxury law summit in, in the UK all about compliance, about uh, legal structures, about the fashion industry. And I was a speaker there and, uh, and she talked to me about her dreams and I said, oh, this would be great. And she said, well, let me create a cave, which we discussed and tell me what you think, right? It was a gift from her uh, to me. And I loved it so much. And I said, oh my God, I love it. This is so nice. And this is exactly what I would love to do and I will have. And so we created Human Highness out of a conversation and uh, we barely knew each other. And uh, we launched that last year in October and it has been the most incredible experience. Uh, so that's my clothes line. Then I have um, the consultancy, which was then built from the obstacle of working from that big media company over to become an entrepreneur. That is then uh, my consultancy, which, which was built there, Finding Butterflies Consultancy. And... Um, of course, uh, as you said before, I'm a fintech investor. Uh, there's some investments that I'm doing with my husband uh, from our private um, uh, money, which is also really exciting because I learned so much about um, new medical advances, for example. Um, one of them is, is a medical company that works with microbiomes and how they can um, predefine uh, or already see cancer in very early stages. Mm -hmm. And uh, that goes then with my medical appetite that I did. I studied medical before. That's how I met my ex-husband as well. And I'm studying medical again after my burnout, more in the integrative um, medicine space, everything alternative, um, which means just as a, as a bracket, because a lot of people say, what, is it? what does it mean, integrative medicine? It's when you, for example, if you have something broken or your gut is hanging out, don't come and see me because I can't help you. But if you have something with mental health, for example, or, um, oh, he's, he's, he's not so happy at the moment. And uh, with mental health or something else, um, which is a bit more internally, I can help you with that, uh, with different types of therapy and different types of uh, consulting. And so that's integrative medicine, acupuncture, for example, that's something a lot of people know about and uh, mindful practices and so on. So these are some of the businesses uh, I'm working with at the moment and I love it. Great. 
Can you share with us some of your successes and what are you really proud of? Uh, and of course, if you, if, if you can give us some examples, that will be really lovely. Yes. Um, so my successes, of course, are my children, right? We live in this world while we are really here. Well, at least for me, that is the feeling I have about my life has really become a crystal clear when I became a mother. Um, it's these human beings, these little, little humans that everything I'm doing is really for them. What is the legacy? I give to them and also how I check myself constantly is that if I would see myself on a reputable magazine like Spiegel or whatever on the cover at some point in my life, would I be proud of that coverage? And that is really something I'm looking for my children to really provide them with a crystal clear path on what I have built and how they can take it from me once I stop with it and how they can make it theirs, which is fantastic. So that's definitely my greatest success, my children. Then more in the workspace, of course, Professor Sort of Orders has been fantastic. Out of an idea of nothing, we had no funding, nothing. We created all of that over six years now, a lot through volunteer work with amazing human beings who give their time, uh, sponsorships from friends. We don't have a lot of institutional investors at all at the moment. Um, so if someone is listening and wants to support press supporters and, and support a summer school, we would be extremely grateful. Um, but so far, we have always juggled it around, which is difficult, but it's just such a feeling of success to help thousands of people around the world on what we can provide from what we have just because we want to. And that fills me with such a pride um, because it's just, you know, it's a, it's a lot of work. And I do that in my spare time uh, with all of these amazing people working with me, my whole team and my co-founders. Um, then um, what I'm really proud of when it comes to, you mentioned some of the accolades I have received. I'm really proud of each and every one of them. You know, the woman of the decade, um, my honorary doctorate, the freedom of the city of London. I was the first woman from Luxembourg to receive that ever in history. Um, so no one else, uh, no other female in Luxembourg has ever received that award, which is fantastic. Um, it was such a proud moment for me because, uh, wow, who am I, right? A small country in Europe and there I'm getting that award that Nelson Mandela got and Bill Gates and all of these amazing people. Uh, it's just, it really, you know, helped me to understand that what I'm doing is maybe not that bad and uh, you know i may be doing not so so bad that i was thinking i'm a very big critic of myself and always want to be perfect right so uh, that really gave me that feeling of wow yeah people see what i'm doing and and um like that we can spread the word right because through the accolade a lot of people got to know me then because they were like who is she why is she getting that and they got in touch with me and again it's that that circle which starts rolling on itself and um that makes me so proud right and uh it definitely keeps me motivated for future ambitions and um future projects which i'm already thinking of because you know i never stop with that and uh yeah so these are my proudest moments and this is what i feel my greatest success is just my work my children my family and the way i live my life because you, I think you should always live your life the way you want other people to treat you as well. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it has been an amazing ride so far. Good and bad. It has all been fantastic. Mm -hmm. If you are to give a little one piece of advice to everybody who is uh, watching or will be watching later, how would you advise them to handle their negative emotions, to handle the obstacles that really get inside of their hearts and, and it's difficult to process? It's a really good question. And I myself, you know, sometimes I can get so angry that I also want to take the pillow and Rah! like, this is annoying, right? And I have these moments as well. I am half Italian, so my father is Italian. So, you know, we have it a little bit more on the explosive sides as well, the Italian uh, genes but um no how I, how I have been handling that so far is really um i meditate a lot 
mm-hmm. which I think is really important. And since my burnout, that really became super clear. If I don't meditate for a few days, I can feel anxiety coming up again, just because I feel disconnected to my body again. And since the burnout, my body just will not accept any disimbalance anymore. So as soon as I get disimbalanced, my body tells me, which is a big blessing. It's an obstacle, but it's also an opportunity for me to just check in with myself and be in line with what I need to do and how I need to live my life. Um, so that for sure. Then also um, something everyone can do of all age is journaling. When I wake up, and I should be more diligent with that, thinking about it, I haven't done it for a few weeks now since baby is born, just because in the morning I am so tired after the night, uh, and then I have calls and work, but um, journaling. So waking up, the first thing you do, you have a notepad next to your bed and a pen, and you just write down everything and anything that comes to your mind. And it can be rubbish. It can be like, oh my God, I really don't want to do this. What should I write? Like even these sentences, write them down. And all of a sudden it clicks and you just write, 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 write. And the emotions come out negative and positive. Because when you look, and I learned that with my PhD, subconscious, your body, your head, doesn't know if what you think is real or not. For it, it is always real, right? So it's the reality. So your thoughts are extremely powerful. So rather think something positive than negative. Because, and even if you don't believe it yourself, who cares? Because your body will believe it, right? If you, if you tell yourself, you look into the mirror and you say, I'm happy, healthy, successful, love, and I have no financial problems, just tell yourself that every day. Your body will believe it. Your mind will get more at ease, right? And it sounds funny. People who are listening, probably some of them will be like, yeah, sure, whatever. It sounds stupid. Just try it. It really makes a difference the way you think and how that subconsciously affects your, how calm you are, how you sleep, how your memory functions and all of cognitive behavior and all of this stuff. It's, It's really powerful. Your thoughts are extremely powerful. And, you know, if people would really realize how powerful they really were, they would not think negative at all. So start today. I think that is really one of the main things I would like people to take away from this specific question. Change your thoughts right now, right here, today. Uh, And even if they are not true yet, just think them, say them out loud just for your own sanity and your own body and your own well-being. It will make a big difference. I love how you bring uh, the body and the mind together. We actually have a question from one of our listeners, and I'm going to bring it up. So Tanya Murphy says, you juggle so, so many balls. How do you prioritize what you are working on? What you on any Any one one day? day? Yes. Thinking of the Um, urgent versus the important. Yes, exactly. So thank you so much. So um, that is a really good question. Thank you, Tanya Murphy. And thank you for submitting a question. Um, It's for me, well, my priority when it comes to urgent is that importance is that everyone around me is settled. That is always my go-to base, fundamental base, whatever that might be for you, right? is everyone or whatever is important to you just for your own sanity is that safe and that would be my children and my husband of course and my family so i always make sure and my friends i'm always there for everyone (laughs) believe it or not and then of course there's always projects coming in i get at least 50 100 emails a day a lot of them with do you want to speak here i have a new opportunity oh this is a project do you have an introduction um can i can i meet you for coffee i need to ask you a question can i have your advice just all the time constantly right and it's just about okay so how do i feel today because how i feel is what i want to get out right if i feel rubbish i i i I don't believe that i should push myself since the burnout again i prioritize of what do i feel like i want to give because if i don't feel well myself i can't give wellness to others right or good advice if I feel like like um, not so well. I don't want to say crap, as everyone would say in, in, in the good street language. But um, 
also does it bring something to how, what I believe in, right? For me, morals and ethics at work and in private are extremely important. When it comes to work then, with the juggling so many balls, right? Is it something I like? Is it something I want to give my time? Because time is your most valuable commodity. Does it give me what I need? And yes, need doesn't always mean financially. Of course, I need to also make my means, right? Take care of my children, pay my bills, all of these things. But I'd rather have something I work on which is great, makes an impact, and it makes me feel good as well. I work with fantastic people that inspire me back. Then getting is so much money. I had some project proposals where I would get for a 30 second video, they wanted to give me 5,000 pounds for an Instagram video, right? And I declined, why? Because I did research on them and they were working with the far right political party. And I was like, no, I, that is not what I believe in. I said, I don't judge you. you, that is your political view, but it's not mine and I don't want to be part of that. Uh, and so, you know, it's really about what is important to you, to your morals, to your ethics, to your time and to the people around you. And once you assess all of these things, you do your due diligence on people as well, because people don't always, they look great on paper, but they don't always are great in real life. Um, and with all of that combined, that is how I take my decisions on how I work with who. And so my balls, even though they're all in the air and there's many of them that I'm juggling, they all align. And I love each and every one of them because I chose them. Great answer. I hope uh, you are happy, Tanya Murphy. Thank you for submitting this question. Now, recently you started working with the UNESCO campaign on um, Kindness matters. Tell us a little bit about that, because it does matter a lot. For sure. I think now as well, with the pandemic, we have seen that kindness is really just inevitable. We need more of that now than ever before. Um, and, you know, kindness, by definition, is an act, is, is an action you do without expecting any return or anything, really. It's just to purely give it because you want to give it to help someone else, right? And um, so the Kindness Matters campaign, they approached me because of a friend of mine, Leonor, from the Montessori School. She's the CEO there. And um, I was just straight away taken. I was like, yes, of course. You know, I have children. And I have seen a lot of unkindness during my divorce. A lot of people talking really badly about me who didn't even know me or, you know, magazines and all that stuff. I have, I have experienced such an extent of, of, of abuse and unkindness by strangers that I felt I don't want to have that or give that or make anyone else ever feel the way I felt when I felt it because it's not nice and no one should feel that. So kindness is really something that, that, it spreads like a pandemic as well, but just a good pandemic. So they approached me and they said, hey, we want to create one day as we have International Women's Day, for example, which is a very well-known one or the International Day of the Child. We want to have one day where um, we focus specifically on kindness. And uh, do you want to be part of that to creating that? But in order to create that, we need to create awareness. We need to collect a million messages of kindness. I think they started with half a million first. And within two months already in the campaign, we surpassed two million messages of kindness submitted by people from all over the world, which is amazing. Now we are targeting a million and a half. And with all of these, we can go to the UN and say, hey, there's so many people out there who have experienced this and this is how it has helped them. We need that day, right? To really put pressure to create a day like that. Um, through that as well, I created a council with all of these friends I have from all over the world with different skills. And it goes a little bit with my TED talk, for example, my TEDx mm -hmm. talk in Luxembourg. It's about, you know, be bold, connect to people, the three pillars of magic, right? What happens when you talk to a stranger? How will that change your life? And there I actually gave as well a call to action at the three pillars of magic uh, at my speech, which I said, for 30 days, every day, meet one new person. Is it the person in the cafe? Is it in a, in a restaurant? Is it at the butcher, in the shop, at work, whatever, a stranger? 
ask that person, who are you? What are you doing? Who inspires you? Take note for 30 days. And you will see it will change your life forever because you're going to meet new people. You're going to make new friends. You get new opportunities, maybe. Uh, you, you, you learn about new projects. You learn about how different cultures interact and just all of that input that you would not have had if you wouldn't be bold and courageous to just take that extra step and talk to other people. Of course, disclaimer, there might be people who are not that nice with you, but hey, you know, we can't do anything with these people, but good, it's a good chance that you will find the good ones. And uh, that has been my experience. And so really with the Kindness Matters campaign, it was really about that, connecting people from all over the world and creating this international day and we're still working on that so we still need everyone's support and people to raise awareness about that so um yeah so what is the call to action today that you want to put out there so my call to action to all of you listening here is that um the unesco mgiep is still looking for acts of kindness um we will share the link as well you just go online and exactly here you will see it and it's really just about a story. It can be a sentence, it can be a paragraph, it can be a video, uh, whatever it is at work, companies, you can do it a company-wide initiative that everyone needs to submit an act of kindness for the guys and, and girls from LinkedIn, right? Work with your company, tell everyone to be part of this. And individually, your family, your children, your grandparents, everyone can be involved. Submit your act of kindness. We need each and every one of them in order to submit them to the United Nations, then in order for maybe one day creating a day of kindness, the International Day of Kindness. How wonderful would that be? And each and every one of you would have contributed to that. What a great feeling would that be that you are one piece of the puzzle to have launched International Day of Kindness. I think that's an amazing call to action. So please do submit, go to this link and submit your act of kindness or the act of kindness that you've seen. So on that note, Tessie, it has been a real pleasure to talk to you, to hear your stories, to hear what inspires you and to hear how you deal with life and with everything that comes your way. Thank you so much for being here with us. I'm looking very much forward to learning who inspires you so that I can invite them to be our next speakers. So that's all from me. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Viviana. Thank you, everyone. Happy.